Kevin's log. Stargate 44 rounded off to the nearest decimal point. I've traveled to Colorado to try to make sense out of nonsense. And it's becoming harder and harder every day to deal with all of the nonsense spark. Anyway, you're listening to Kevin. Kevin's Corner. Still out here in Colorado, ladies and gentlemen. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, I expected a lot of snow and stuff like that, but there's no snow. Snow on the mountains. But uh, what I also expected was more nonsense by the left. Um, just real quick, want to touch base on a story that I didn't get a chance to make a comment about the other day. And that is the little young lady who was killed, unfortunately. I think it was in Houston. She was shot by somebody in the car. Now, we hear about these shootings every single day in other states. Um, if you look for them, okay, that means if you live in that state, you might hear about it on the local level. Um, but it's rare that you hear about it on a national level, unless for whatever reason, the liberal media seems to think that they can capitalize off of it, or people who make their money like ambulance chasers off of race. And in this particular case, that's what happened. Only reason we know about Jasmine Barnes, the young uh, little lady who was shot in the back of a car was because at first they described a white man that did the shooting. So now, based off of that, instead of evidence, waiting it out, any of those things, you have race baiters popping out of nowhere deciding we're going to further encourage all of this racial division, not looking at individual cases and saying, all right, you know what? Just because, say, a black man kills a white man or a white man kills a black person doesn't always mean that it is racially motivated, but we're going to make it seem that way, even if it was to, to find out that the, the guy was white. But in this particular case, it backfired, see. Um, we would have never heard about Jasmine Barnes up here in Ohio or out here in Colorado, wherever you are, if they didn't think that they could push identity politics in a certain narrative. OK, so here's what some of the race baiters thought before some of the evidence comes out. And this should be a lesson to all of the race baiters and black people who have a tendency to listen to these people. And before they get all of the evidence, facts and details, they begin to form a, a big coalition. They, be, they, they can form protests and mobs and, and things like that. And then even sometimes, sometimes they start tearing up stuff before they find out all the details, only to find out later that they didn't get all the facts, but they jumped the gun. So now you got this guy named Sean King who, come to find out, he's not really even a black guy, but he's, you know, I guess maybe he can identify with the black culture. I mean, I saw somebody do a straight up exposure of this man not even really being black, but nonetheless, I guess he just relates to black people and the struggle. So, he decides to jump out there and he raises this money to find out who the person is, only to find out that the little girl who described who she thought did it um, made a mistake. You know, it ended up being a black man named Mr. Black. Now, let me just read a little something that Sean wrote. Um, he said, but to the civil rights activists, including Sean King, who received the tip that led to the arrest, the race of the suspect did not up in the meaning of the case for Jasmine's family or for the country. Now, this is what you call backtracking, okay? Because, see, at this point, Sean King assumed that, you know, after we go ahead and we find out who this is, most likely it's going to turn out to be this white guy. And we want to ensure that all the resources are being done to find out who this person is, okay? But come to find out, it was a black guy. Now, here's the other thing he says after that. He says, uh, we live in a time where somebody could do something like this based purely on hate or race. Now, what that means to me is that before facts, details, motive, any of those things ever came out, this man assumed that the murder of the little girl was done just simply based off of there's a black family driving next to me. I'm going to stop my pickup or ride past and just shoot and kill a whole bunch of little black people or black lady or black kid or whatever. No details, no facts. But you throw a statement out there like this and people who trust you or people who's looking for an excuse to get mad for nothing, people who are always assuming that black people are under attack, 
liberal media who pushes these narratives, Democrats who push these narratives, and people who make their living off of these type of incidents, they like that type of stuff. They don't care how it affects the, the culture, how people look at other races based off of these assumptions. They don't care about the fallout. They don't care about what if all the people in Houston were to start rioting based off of this, this quote that the man made prior to finding out all the facts and the details, like Jesse Jackson did when he went down to Ferguson and got up and said, this here is an assassination. And all of them start to riot and tear up their own homes while Jesse got on his plane and went back to his nice house. So now you throw a statement out like that. All right. Now, listen, I'm going to read it again. He says, we live in a time where somebody could do something like this based purely, purely on hate or race. He said on Sunday and that it turned out to not be the case. I don't think changes the devastating conclusion that people had thought something like this was possible. Hmm. Is that an adequate retraction? Did he walk it back fairly? So, so what he's saying, basically, it didn't change anything based on the fact that people could think that something like that could happen in this pretty, in this day and age. Um, is equivalent to it actually happening. So the statement that I said that appeared to be an absolute, to be backed up with facts, some type of details, which it wasn't, it was an assumption, um, is equal to people even thinking that it could happen. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that no black person in America could ever get hung by a group of angry white KKK members. But I don't walk around pushing this and creating fear in the heads of Americans and making them think that this is the norm and that there are KKK members wandering around at all seconds looking like, man, where can we grab a black person and hang them? OK, they're far few in between. So now when you look at most of the black people who get killed, it is more likely that a black person would kill them. So. In most black people's mind who live around other black people, the fear is not, you know what, when I wake up, I think about the possibility of a white person just hating me because of my race and might just shoot me randomly. Versus, I see the guys down at the corner selling drugs, I see the gang members all in my neighborhood, I hear gunshots ringing out all the time while either I'm playing in the playground or my kids are, and I'm more concerned about a black person shooting one of my kids or shooting me, see? But this guy wants to make it seem like these rare, far in between incidents is the norm. And that this is the conscious thought, the, 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 the thought that is in the frontal lobe of most black people or Americans walking around going, yeah, I mean, I, that's what I think about on a, a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Whatever happened, to making decisions and coming to conclusions about how life is based on your surroundings and your circumstances. So most black people who live in predominantly black neighborhoods, that's their surroundings. They identify more so with what's going on in the neighborhood and that's where they draw a lot of their conclusions and fears and things like that. So I think there's a bigger problem than a random angry, racist, white person shooting a black kid or a black person, all right? Now, here's my other issue with this. If I don't hear Sean King and everybody else who tried to get onto this, this, this bandwagon until they found out, like, oh, crap, I guarantee you, they wouldn't have called this lawyer who's a civil rights lawyer for whatever reason to get involved for no reason, I guess. See, he thought it was going to be a race thing that he could get some pub, you know? Sean King thought it was going to be a race thing. I'm sure if they would have heard up front that a black person did this, they would have just went ahead and moved on along with the media, just like all other times where black kids are being randomly shot in black neighborhoods all the time. And there's no GoFundMe. There's no money being raised for these parents. There's no Sean King saying, we're going to find a killer. Let's raise all this money. There's no civil rights activists and lawyers going down taking cases pro bono or offering their services. There's no CNN coverage, no MSNBC coverage. I wonder why. I wonder why. But you know what? If I don't hear their butts do the same thing that they tried to do for Jasmine, which I appreciate 
the money that they raised for the family, and it's a sad situation. But if I don't hear them do the same thing and respond the same way to all the hundreds and thousands of little black kids that are victims of black-on-black -black crime and violence, then shut it up when something like this happens and the assumption is it's done by a white person. You're disingenuous, you're fake, you're race-baiting, and you're dividing our country even further. Now, it might be tight, but it's right. Now, you've been listening to Kevin and Kevin's Corner. Check me out Wednesday nights. Unfortunately, not this Wednesday. I found out I'm going to be in the sky tomorrow doing my normal broadcast time. So, you won't be able to catch me in Kevin's Corner. But catch me next Wednesday. Spread the word. Unfortunately, I ain't going to be able to go live tomorrow. I'm going to be on a plane, and I don't like to fly, y'all. So, I'm going to be like Mr. T when he, and on the 18 when he used to have to fly. I ain't getting on no plane, fool. Yeah, have to drug me. Knock me out. That's my weakness. I'm sorry to tell y'all that. Yes, I do have an Achilles heel. It's, it's flying. Yeah, don't tell my enemies, though. They might try to use it against me. Anyway, um, check me out every Wednesday nights normally. Um, I go live on YouTube. My radio blog talk show link is in the bottom. And check out Extreme Tees. There's a link in the bottom to, to look at their clothing. Um, and if there's a promo code, put my, my name in it, Kevin. Also, if you want to donate to Kevin's Corner, feel free. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification button. And we'll see you next time in Kevin's Corner. Stay away from all them race baiters out there. God bless.